What's good, everybody? In my video today, we're talking about properties of equality and how to properly solve equations. Now, this topic, it's basically listing the steps and properties you use to solve an equation, but it can be complicated if students don't understand how the steps work. And a common error I see is students are either one step ahead or one step behind for listing their reasons. Perfect example, a lot of students will put something like, combine like terms at this step. Why? Because they see that we combine five and three to get two, 14 and negative 16 to get negative two. But guys, unfortunately that is wrong. And hopefully by now you've looked at these arrows and are questioning, why are these arrows here? And the reason why is because the properties are kind of like, how do we get from this step to this step, what property did we use? And when we look here, they use the distributive property, right? Now, in the second reason, we're talking about, hey, what did they do from this line to get to this line? And we should already know, guys, that all they did was simplify, or we could say combine like terms. The reason why we say simplify, guys, is because we didn't apply subtraction on both sides or addition on both sides. No, what we did was just combine like terms here, combine like terms here to get to this step. Now, from step three to step four, what did they do? We noticed that they subtracted 2x from both sides. So now we could say they use the subtraction property of equality and I'm abbreviate by using P-O-E. Also, if you get a little bit confused, guys, solve the equation as you look at the steps. That's what I tell my students. Now, we're saying from step four to step five, what property did we use? And all they did was add two on both sides. So we would say the addition property of equality. And like I tell my students, the last step, nine times out of 10, is always going to be the division property of equality. So this is just our first problem of three. This is an introductory. Let's jump over into the next ones. In problem number two now, guys, they threw a curveball in there. And this is what they do. They get us used to the steps, and then we give the reasons. And now they flip it around. Just guys, pay attention to what the properties are and just know that same format is going to be present. So they said that, hey, in this first step, we're going to use the multiplication property. And I see, I, I love this problem because students typically get this wrong. Just remember that we're going to get rid of this fraction by using the multiplication property, right? That's how we get rid of fractions. So we would have four parentheses, x minus three is equal to 60, right? Use the multiplication property. Now they say, hey, we want you to use the distributive property get, to get to your next step. So once I distribute, I have four x minus 12 is equal to 60. Now, right? We know that in equations, we need to isolate. So they say add the addition property of equality, right? So I add 12 on both sides. And now I have 4x is equal to 72. Okay. And then in my last step, let's make sure we're going to divide by 4. And we're going to get x is equal to, and let's see, what exactly is my answer? I think x is going to be equal to 18. Fact check me, guys. I'm just guessing off the top of my head. I can't remember. But please make sure that you guys know how to do it from both angles. If they give you the steps and you list the properties, or if they give you the properties and need you to list the steps. Hopefully, this video was helpful for you. If it was, smash the like button for us. There will be a part two. Look out for that in the next coming days. Thank you guys for joining me on Algebra 1 with. Mr. Peters.